You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Lee's Path. Violet Memoir, or Violet Memoir Lee's Path, if you prefer. So yeah, we were just, uh, from the last episode, we were just in the library reading up on uh, this whole Helena Lawson thing. And, well, <sighs> Lily's being a bit thirsty, and she's, uh, you know, to just, uh, just uh, pe peering at them hot three hot guys we got sitting over there. We're going to see where this ends up. God, why did that sound so southern? I'm sorry, I apologize for that. My my southernness came out. <laughs> anyway, guys, please sit back and enjoy. Let me you for the next 20 minutes, and let's jump right in. Alarm saying you're up, and let's go. All right. Yeah, what do you need? There's a strange shade to his voice, as if, as if just talking is exhausting to him. He doesn't look upset. If anything, he looks more comfortable now. It's more that, like, all this interaction is draining him of his energy. Do you think you guys can look up more about Helena's friends? Uh, when I looked things up before, I only got the basics. The nodding he gives in return is skittish. Uh, it might be the best just to look up only a bit more before leaving. I think he's reaching his limits soon enough. He deserves a break. Lucas isn't the only one affected by the looks of it, as Oscar also seems just as restless. He's irreverent, but coy. Now it looks like he's actively trying to force conversation. Likely all this work and no play isn't fitting for someone like him. If I can talk to you guys, I'll fucking talk to you guys on the football team. Most of them don't go to the gym, but I do know a few guys there that... But I do, but, but, blah. I do, but a few guys there know them. We can't do that right now. Lee's voice is firm, but not un unkind like a parent telling one of their children no. It's just a small jog. I think you guys wouldn't even notice I wouldn't notice I'm gone before I'm back. I'll be there here and I'll be blah. I'll be there and back in a flash. I don't know why this game tongue ties me. I think it's the incredibly bright colors that are like somewhat distracting to me when I'm trying to read. Because this game is super colorful. <laughs> it's hard not to notice when you're here here when you're as loud as a fire alarm. So obnoxious and insistent. Like usual, Oscar doesn't look offended by Lucas's comment. It's hard to tell if Oscar just doesn't understand he's insulting him or just chooses to ignore it. Maybe he just thinks it's cute. Actually, I think that's exactly it. He looks towards me and gives a wink. It's lacking any form of subtlety, making his intentions with the fox as clear as day. The sigh that Lee releases in response has more than any words could mutter. <laughs> Plus, I might show up without a shirt. I always prefer working out shirtless when I can. Don't wear a lot when swimming, you get? But probably cause too much of a distraction. Yeah. Lucas makes a struggling whimper and looks over towards me with a panicked expression, but there's a hint of something else in there. I think the blush showing through his fur is a sign that there's parts of him that don't entirely disapprove. Oscar grabs the hem of his tank top and begins to pull it before a growl stops him dead as in his tracks, though the amused expression never leaves his face. It's a threatening sound, and I can't help but wonder how Lee's able to make the sound feel like it's crawling up my spine. It's such a guttural noise that it sounds closer to a monster than a student. We're all staring at Lee now, unified in our confusion. Lucas looks ready to get up and bolt, and Lily's concern is palpable. Looks like this is looks like this is jarring everyone, not just me. Lee himself looks annoyed, but is but it doesn't feel like it's directed towards the otter. His eyes are closed and his head pointing towards the floor, avoiding all of our eyes in the process. He looks almost ashamed. Sorry, Oscar, just don't, don't go too far. The shift in the otter's demeanor is even more jarring than Lee's outburst. His smile drops and he lets go of his shirt without any of his usual dynamic flair. Despite being so different than from normal, it feels natural on him. Shit, man, I didn't mean to go that far. I was just messing around. I'll, uh, I'll tone it down a little. Lee begins to shake his head before he stops himself. He ponders something for a few seconds, and in that moment, I'm wishing I could peek into his head to see what he's thinking. In the end, he just nods and looks towards me. The look he has is firm, but there's something in the way he looks into my eyes. It looks... sad. Lily well, decides to speak first. I'm thankful for that. I've never been good in social situations, so it's good to have someone to help with them. Ooh, excuse me. I think it'll be best if we talk to them another day. I think looking up more about them is a great idea. Just make sure you're, just make sure you're being respectful and don't pry too deep, okay? I'll be fine. Lucas gets up and walks a couple steps back to the computer before he stops and turns towards Oscar. His whiskers are twitching, and it looks like his whole body is twitching. He looks nervous. Do you think you can help me? I'm not very familiar with sports. It's never been something I've been interested in. Too brutish. I prefer books to legally beating other people up. I mean, he's not wrong. 
He crosses his arms and looks to be digging his claws into his sleeve. His ears are pressing down hard against his head, and he's looking everywhere except towards us. But what catches my eye the most is the way his tail just loses all life and hangs limp behind him. I think he's embarrassed with himself, maybe even angry. Now, Oscar isn't having any of that. He slides right up next to the fox. I'm expecting him to press up against him like he does to me, but he only gives him a smile and a light pat on the back. The touch is respectful, and that's something more shocking than I think anyone expected. I don't think anyone's more surprised than the fox, though. His entire body pricked up as soon as the otter got close, but now, he's just lo now he just looks surprised. There's no words as they walk towards the computer and sit down. Lee follows along behind them. The way his ears are perked up, the only thing that betrays his surprise. As soon as he arrives with the other two, he's back to sighing, to sighing when Lucas and Oscar are back to bickering about personal space. But there's a warmth to their argument. It's not friendship, but there's less of a distance between all of them. All of us, all of, all of us, because I'm part of them too. We're all together in this as classmates, as friends. If Helena had friends like this too, then why did she end up the way she did? What happened exactly? It just doesn't look like something she'd do under normal circumstances. But again, people are capable of awful things. Terrible, cruel things that can completely destroy someone's life. Even a single mistake can completely ruin everything. Hmm. The next couple of entries are short and simple, just quick updates about her life. Just the regular, ordinary days of a college freshman with absolutely nothing spectacular mixed in. Shopping with Mercy, they have a, meek, they have a weekly tradition of getting iced coffee and drifting between stores. Funnily enough, Mercy doesn't actually like coffee, so her choices tend to be super flavored. Going to the bar with Quinn. If it's a good night, then Quinn ends up heading off with some guy and Conrad takes her home. From the sounds of it, they go out as a trio often, even as a group of four if Mercy tags along. Things with Conrad are going slow and steady. The occasional date and text, but nothing more. He hasn't even made any moves on her. They're taking their time with things. Though it does sound like he's being a gentleman. But then I come across an entry that catches my immediate attention. Happy birthday, Mom! I just got off the phone with you and I just had to write, I had to, had to write right now. I'm sorry I couldn't get you a present, but I wouldn't even know how to ship them to you on the time. But you'll get something... But you'll get... But I'll get you something when I come visit home. It's strange not being home for your birthday. We can't go out to get your ma and nails done today. I think that's a first in like ten years. Mercy and I are going, to out, going out later to get them done. I'll make sure to send you a photo of them. I know you'll send me one back. You better not get those neon green nails again, though. They're so ugly. I know things have been hard lately, but I want you to know that I love you more than anyone else. There's no way I'll ever let someone hurt you. I'll call you again later, I promise. Uh, it's, uh, it'll always just be you and I against the world. No matter what, just so just keep being strong for the both of us. There's a poignant silence between Lily and me, the weight of that entry hanging between us. I know she's reading it along with me. The only noise that's piercing this somber atmosphere is the quiet bickering between Oscar and Lucas. It's comforting reading it with her. It's not like the other night. It doesn't feel like it's suffocating me. Nothing particularly bad has happened in the diary so far. In fact, the tone has been pretty upbeat, but that just makes the sticky, sickly feeling in my stomach worse. Like she can sense my thoughts, she reaches a hand over and takes my own. There's no spark, it's completely platonic, and somehow that's everything because that's everything because that means I have a friend. Someone who sees me as only a friend and likes me for me. Thanks. It's no problem. We gotta be there for each other. We're almost in the adult world now, and everyone isn't going to look out for us anymore. So it's up to us to help each other out. The feeling of her claws through my fur brings back the memory of a summer vacation long ago. My mother's claws scratching the back of my ear as Marcus bandages up the get the Bandages up the grays on my knee. He hugged me, and they never let me go until I stopped crying. Pulling my hand away, Lily sits, Lily sits up straight and gives me a wide, and gives me a smile as I close the book, content for one day. A deep violet of the cover is forever burned into my brain by this point. All done. The real question screams out louder than the one than the one said. It says, "Are you okay?" That is the question, isn't it? The whole diary is weighing down on me. Stopping would be the best choice. Yeah, I'm fine. I think it's a good place to stop. We learned a little bit. Let's hope the boys found something better. I think back to the last entry in the diary. Something about that last entry felt a little strange to read. I feel like there's definitely something up with it. She had a good relationship with her mom, but I feel like there's something wrong. It's probably her dad. That catches me off guard. I did consider that possibility, but I didn't think she'd be so brash about it. What makes you think that? I don't know if he's dead or if they're divorced, but it looks like he's not involved in their little, in their life much anymore. It's probably why they're so close. She does seem really close with her mom. I love my mom, but we're not that close. Not since I was younger. Well, what about you? Lily's face twists into, an, twists into an expression I can't describe before she just shakes her head. 
She opens her mouth to answer, but closes it instead. She looks towards the guys crowding around the computer, and I follow her gaze. It looks like the atmosphere here is even affecting them. And there's less open talking, only the occasional mutter from Oscar into Lucas's ear, but the fox's but the make but that blah. The occasional mutter from Oscar into Lucas's ear that makes the fox's ears perk up. There's even a distance in their actions. Well, Lucas is still using is still using the computer. Lee and Oscar are both on their phones. Things are her phone cuts her off, blaring loudly. After checking the caller ID, she's standing up and heading off towards one of the aisles. I'll be back. I gotta take this call. Make sure things stay peaceful. I don't want to see Lucas clawing someone's eyes out, okay? I don't think I can stop any fight from breaking out if something happens, but there's only one response I can give her. It's not like I can just tell her no. I'll try my best. She flashes me a smile before dashing down the, close, down the closest aisle of books, her phone pressing against her head. Her loud voice echoes towards, towards us for a few moments longer before disappearing deeper into the library. Looking towards the rest of our group, they're all staring in the direction Lily disappeared down before Lee backs before Lee looks back back to me with his eyebrow raised. She's just got a call. It seems to satisfy them because they go back to looking at their screen, still completely disconnected from each other. Reading the previous entry over again, I can't shake this feeling of melancholy this little message to her mother has. What did her mother feel when she found out her daughter killed her friends? What about when she killed herself? Did she get two calls or just one? I wonder if they were the worst calls of her life. A light pattering sound distracts me, and I notice little stains on the page. I'm crying. It's not a lot, but my eyes are watering. Did my chest always feel this heavy? Maybe doing this alone is a bad idea. Maybe... Kid. It's quiet, but close enough that I nearly fall out of my chair in surprise, but a hand steadies me. His grip is firm, but never too tight. Even in a split-second decision, he's able to make sure he doesn't hurt me. Sometimes I wonder just how Lee just how Lee thinks he could ever be the reason I feel bad. Sure, he hit me in the face, but accidents happen, and it would be obvious to anyone who saw it that it was an accident. Anyone except Lee. I don't think I'll ever get that. I don't think I'll ever get the devastated look he had out of my head. The panic in his voice. It's something that I never want to see again, and if I'm able to, I won't let it happen again. Looking towards Lee, I can see his stony face, but I don't focus on that because that never shows the truth. It's just a mask he puts up on. He just puts on to intimidate and hide whatever he's feeling. What I concentrate on is his eyes because they're swirling with so much worry. The striking emerald eyes that stand out on his face are standing stark and radiant. If the rest of Lee is the, is the coal, then his eyes are the diamonds underneath, except they might even be prettier than any diamonds I've ever seen. They bring his handsome face together. Here, you look like shit. Let me clean you up. It's a stupid thing to laugh at, but I can't stop it from spilling out. It's just such a charmingly blunt thing to say. It looks like that's the right move because he smiles that wonderful toothy smile. He sits next to me and rubs his fingers under my eyes. His touch is delicate and the sensation of his claws brushing against my skin causes me to shiver. It must have given him shock because he pulls his hand away for a moment. It's only for a second before it returns, though there's hesitation in his movements. His smile is still there, but it looks fragile and his eyes aren't just filled with concern. There's fear there, too. Taking a deep breath, I try to muster all the courage I can and reach my own hands up to touch his. So enough to startle him. So enough to not to startle him. There's a fragility to this intimate moment and I don't want to shatter it. I want to say something to him, anything to comfort him, but I can't find any words. All I can do is run my fingers along his knuckles and hope it's enough. Eventually, he pulls his hand away, but he doesn't get back up and while that worry never truly leaves his eyes, he looks more comfortable being close to me again. You okay? Yeah, I'm good. It's just heavy stuff, you know? This time, he only gives a grunt in response before looking towards the diary. After an unsuccessful attempt to read, he shuffles his chair closer. The pressure against my shoulder feels different than it did with Lily, and I can't stop myself from feeling both giddy and nauseous at the same time. It's a mixture of feelings that I've never experienced before, and I'm not sure if I like it or hate it more. It's embarrassing, but Lee makes no comment if he noticed anything. He's a slow reader, but I don't mind. His presence is comforting, and I consider leaning against him, but I can't bring myself to do it. Just the thought of it sends a rush of heat to my face, forcing me to count my blessings that he's focused on the diary. Did something happen between your parents? Did something happen to your parents? What? This upset you? In a way, I guess. I think it's a combination of everything. He only raises his eyebrow at me. It's a question without words. I just... I wonder if something happened to me today. When, when my... When my I wonder if something happened to me today. Would my mother know I loved her? Would that phone call devastate her? Are you too close? I mean, I think so. I don't know. We used to be all this so close, but then things happened and we all drifted apart. Do you want to be closer? Of course! 
Then be closer. Call her and tell her you love her and that you're happy she's your mother. His voice falters only f for only a moment, but it stands out like neon paint across a canvas. The somber aura em emitting from him is too thick not to not notice. I didn't think about how insensitive I'm sounding. I wish I could help him like he's helping me, but I just don't know how. It might be overstepping my boundaries. No, it definitely is, but I need to know. Ask him about his father. Fuck! Your father's still alive, right? Why aren't you close with him? The topic must be touchy because he clenches his jaw and his eyes harden. He doesn't look angry, at least not at me. My father isn't a good man. But he's your father, right? He takes in a deep breath. The motion is sharp and his entire body looks tense. However, when he releases it, he relaxes and Lee looks more exhausted than I've ever seen him before. My mother died when I was young, and when she died, he went with her. But you said he's still alive! He is, but he's not the man, not the same man. Things were never the same after that, and they never will be. I'm not sure what to say, because what can I say? I've never been I've never been in these circumstances. Both of my parents are still alive and together. I get to call them up whenever I want. Lee can't do that anymore, not with one of them gone forever. Kid, I don't want to talk about him right now, but I promise you, I'll tell you about it later. Lee's entire body looks on edge and tense like he's trying to contain himself. I've said that he looks scary before, but right now, he looks deserving of that fear, even if it was an unfair judgment. I didn't mean to... Kid, stop. That shuts me up immediately, and despite how ashamed it makes me feel, I can't help, I can't help myself from feeling a little bit scared of Lee right now. He looks over at me, and it's like his entire body freezes up, his eyes widening, and all his fur stands on end. Then all at once, everything crumbles and he's crestfallen. I've never seen him look so vulnerable before, and the guilt from my previous thoughts are eating away at my mind. But before I can dwell on them for too long, please don't look so scared of me. I promised you. I promised you I'd never hurt you. My throat clenches and my mouth dries up because how could I make? Because how could I make him look like this and feel like this? I know you won't. I swear. I, I didn't think you'd ever hurt me. But I did, kid. I did. I can't take him looking like this anymore, and I reach towards him. Consequences be damned, because right now, he needs help. Quick as a flash of lightning, he grabs my wrist. His grip is loose, as if he's too scared that if he grips any tighter, he completely shatter my bones. Those stunning eyes that look un like uncut gems are dull and without their wonderful sheen. They're tainted with fear. Fear for me. You won't hurt me. I know you won't. But I might. Despite his protests, he slowly lets go of my hand. I can tell he's still scared, but I want him to know that I trust him. My initial plan had been to put a hand on his shoulder. A simple comforting gesture, but that isn't enough, so I go one more step forward. He tenses under my touch when he when my hands gently caresses his cheek. I didn't have any I didn't have any it didn't have any intention of being romantic or sexual. I wanted it to just be platonic. To be there for him and to show I'm not afraid. But regardless of my intentions, there's a feeling of intimacy there. One that only grows when he leans into my touch. His fur is coarse, far coarser than my own. Is that because of a difference in, spe in species or something else? But the skin underneath, the sensation against my finger pads is electrifying, and I can't stop a smile from spreading across my face. And we just sit there in wonderful silence. The fear in his eyes never leaves, but there's something more in them now. It takes me a moment to realize that he's happy, that he's content. Although only seconds pass, it feels like an hour when he pulls away and stands up. Thanks, kid. You sure you're okay? I'm feeling much better. Great, even. That causes a smile to that causes a small smile to grow across his face. It's not the large toothy smile that I'm used to, but it's something. A little peak of sunlight through a cloudy sky. He takes a step away before stopping and coming back. The look on his face is something I've never seen on him before. It's certainly it's uncertainty, but it quickly fades away. I'm gonna check I'm gonna check something out tomorrow. Wanna come? What is it? Mercy worked it worked for a shelter. I'm checking it out. Sure, I mean, yeah, I'll come along. And with that, he walks away towards Oscar and Lucas, both of which have been looking towards us for the most of the conversation. I bet Lucas caught I bet Lucas caught most of it, but he doesn't make any indication that he had been listening. Looking down at my phone, I open my mother's number and stared at it for a few moments before I get up and walk down one of the aisles. I'm almost in the clear when I see Lee's eyes oh hold up Lee. Okay. I'm almost in the clear when I see Lee's eyes staring directly at me. There's a moment that I'm worried he's going to stop, but he just looks down towards his phone once more. Being the quiet type is definitely a blessing sometimes. It doesn't look like there's anyone in this section. Looking at the books, I think they're about Icelandic history. I suppose this isn't a popular section, but that's, a, that's good for me. I just want to make a phone call. Bringing up my mother's number, there's a familiar sinking feeling in my stomach, and I begin to feel dizzy, but I push it away. 
I can't let that night stop me from calling my mother forever. It rings for almost 20 seconds before she picks up. She might be at work right now. Hopefully it isn't too busy. Hearing her voice through the phone brings a flood of memories back. It brings a flood of emotions. A mixture of relief, warmth, and embarrassment. Hey baby, what's wrong? I haven't heard from you in a few days. Everything going alright? My mouth feels so dry all of a sudden, and forming words is a lot harder now. After taking a deep breath, I'm able to pull myself together. It's going good. I just thought I should give you a call. We haven't called in a while, and I was scared I might be worrying you. I hope I'm not causing you problems at work. Oh, baby, no. We're not busy right now, and I'll always be making time for you. It helps that you're married to the boss. I'm able to hear a soft chuckle through the phone, and for some reason that causes all the tension in my body to fall away. It melts away like ice cream on a summer day, and able to handle that wonderful warmth. All right. I'm going to pause it right there, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!